Hello and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back again with you guys for another episode of our Transfer Insight Show, the show in which I'm joined by an expert to talk through one of the players that has been linked with Arsenal. And with so little time remaining in the window and those targets very much narrowing down to just a couple, or even in the case of Arsenal, it seems just one at this stage. And that one is Alexander Izak. I'm very happy to be joined uh, by Maxi Angelo, Swedish football expert. How do you mate? You good? You well? Yeah, yeah, I'm well. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. Um, Alexander Izak, what do you think about the guy? Great striker, pretender. How highly does he rank in, in kind of the world's young strikers right now? Maybe I'm a bit biased, but to, to me, he's among the best. You know, he, he has a he's a very versatile striker as well. He can play like a, like a target role. He can play more of a deep threat. Uh, running in behind defense and and it seemed to just potential and and talent it it's it's so striking how good he is in my opinion um he struggled a bit this season but if you look at it in a in a general perspective it's you can see how great of a striker he is yeah, absolutely. I mean, I my own kind of watching of La Liga last season, the, the goals that he scored, breaking in the season before last as well from that after that move from Borussia Dortmund, kind of became known at the Euros for some of those performances for Sweden as well and really impressed it in those games, despite not scoring loads of goals. It was just kind of how impressive he was on the days. And this season, as you mentioned, it's, it's not gone wildly uh, comparable to, say, the 17 that he scored last year. And I will ask you about that. But just before we do, in regards to kind of for those that haven't seen him at all or are completely out of the know about him, how would you describe him stylistically in terms of kind of his pace, his finishing ability, uh, link-up play and all of those characteristics? Yeah, yeah. As I, as I said earlier, he's a, he's a bit of a versatile striker. He, he can more or less do all parts i think uh he has the size and and, and the intelligence to be like a link up striker he has uh, the offensive skill set to be more of a poaching striker and uh, yeah i if if needed i think he could play on a wing as well because he has that has a pace and the and the technique to to make his man one on one uh to to be a threat there as well so yeah if if you look at at him in a general perspective, he's a he's a quick striker, a uh, good eye for the goal, a good finisher. And uh, I would say his intelligence is is kind of somewhat overlooked. I think he's a, a lot smarter than he's getting credit for. Uh, so yeah, and as as many might forget, because he's been doing this so long, he's still very young. Yeah, absolutely. I think he's someone that grows onto the radar for some people. They see this season of just four goals in La Liga and go, oh, well, he was a one-season wonder. When I kind of stress the point, he's 22. Like, players aren't, you know, they are going to be able to improve. They are going to have seasons upon seasons, but sometimes they're going to go for a period which isn't as strong as the others. He's maybe experienced that over the last six months. And unfortunately, I think that's led to quite a few people already kind of writing him off, which is a bit strange. Why do you think it's it's not necessarily gone as well in these first six months? Has there been associated injury issues? Has it just been coming back during a bad period? Or do you just not think he's lived up to maybe those 17 that he scored in the previous year? Yeah, I think it's been like a combination of, of injuries and not really having that rhythm. Uh, he, he's been struggling with not major injuries, but but minor injuries on, on several occasions this season. Uh, and when when you when you've seen his games, it's a bit. He in Sweden we have a we have a saying uh, called more or less you hit the post and it goes out instead of going in. That's more or less been his uh, season so far. Uh, he's been a bit unlucky, I would say. Um, but yeah, after after the after the. Um, a great start to the season for the Real Sociedad. The the team overall has struggled as well. Uh, they've they've had injuries to key players and they've fallen a bit in the table now. Um, so I think he's also been like it sounds dramatic, but a victim of of the of the team falling. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you do so, see that. I mean, you see that with, with plenty of strikers around. I mean, I remember in the song we were linked to Ollie Watkins, Aston Villa haven't had an amazing first half of the season, especially with Dean Smith at the start of the season. Now things are picking up a bit and, and Watkins as well. But a lot of people just wrote off Watkins because of that poor start to the season, despite the fact in the summer he was a very attractive option. And I think maybe that has definitely affected the same thing with, with Isaac. Speaking about like kind of the transition to the Premier League, he's not a short striker by any means. You know, he's got physicality, he's got height to his game, he's a good build of striker. Do you think that he would be able to cope with the physicalities of English football well? Yes, yes, I, I do. Uh, the last maybe one or two years, he's he's built a lot of, of strength as well. Uh, I think he, he lacked a bit of that before, but he's that's something he's worked on the past one or two years. Uh, then the, the pace and the, and the work rate has always been there, I would say. And he... His pace is a bit underrated, to be honest. Uh, he's faster than you think. Um, I think he would be a, a, a threat in the Premier League, like running in behind defenses or yeah. passing to spaces for him. Um, so I think he he would do well in the Premier League if he if he goes. goes in regards there. to how he is for the Swedish national side and where he's looked at, to, to follow in the footsteps of Zlatan Ibrahimovic is, is never going to be an easy task, uh, whoever comes through. But obviously with the likes of Kulisevsky as well, uh, another obviously great young player, there's this kind of feeling that maybe that next generation of, of Swedish talents is, is coming through right now. Matthias Svanberg is another you know, really strong central midfielder too. So do you think that he has got that potential to lead that Swedish line in that number nine position for, say, the next five to, to eight years and beyond? Uh, 100%. You know, Alexander Isak has been a special story from the beginning. He he joined the, the, the Swedish men's top league uh, as a 16-year-old and and had a fantastic season. Uh, for example, he... he uh, I don't know how to say it in in English, but he he scored a game winner in uh, yeah game winner in yeah. match winning in, goal yeah yeah match winning goal in several uh, derby uh, derbies in 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 Stockholm and uh, there's been many along the way since Slatan Ibrahimovic came through on the Swedish scene, but none 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 of them has been as as hyped as Alexander Isak and and no none has has had like the the same belief that he will become the next big thing for Sweden, and mm. he he broke Slatan's uh, transfer record in from from Allsvenskan. Uh, previously, it was like eight million euros, uh, and and Alexander Isak was sold for nine million euros to Bor yeah. Borussia Dortmund. So he's already a record holder in Sweden, and uh, yeah, I I think he he's grown a lot this past year to be honest uh he's he's been taking a lot more space in the national team on the pitch and off the pitch and yeah. and if if i would say one player for the future uh who will be the big the big name for sweden it would be alexander isak then kulisevsky has great potential but i i i see a bigger ceiling in alexander isak and hmm. um, so yeah i i think he will be the main man for Sweden offensively and this in 2021 he was he's obviously got a, a release clause of 75 million pounds 90 million euros uh inserted into that new deal that he signed after or during the European Championships last year of course it's that is kind of the biggest point of contention for Arsenal supporters I've seen plenty of people put up polls on Twitter feeds. Should Arsenal pay the release clause? Is he worth that amount of money? Would the benefit of bringing him in now with Arsenal's hopes of trying to compete for the Champions League places this season, would it be worth it? I'm interested to know where you sit. Do you think that's reflective of his fee or do you think that's way higher than what he's probably worth in the market right now? I would say it's a, it's a bit higher than, than he's worth in the market right now. But if you factor in his potential in it and and the, the ceiling he has for the future i would say it's it's a reasonable price um so yeah you might overpay a bit for him now but but in the future he i i think he would turn out to be worth that fee uh, and but also it comes down to like coaching at arsenal and needs to look like um 
get the help he needs and but yeah i when you see the the progress Mikel Arteta has done with the likes of Bukayo Saka and Mil Smith Rowe i don't see a problem there i think Mikel Arteta has that player management to to get the best out of Alexander Isak and yeah. and yeah so maybe a bit bit over the market price right now but you know in the future he could be he could turn out to be worth a lot more than that which would be a hell of an achievement considering how much yeah. he's worth which yeah we're talking into hundreds of millions which as you say would be pretty impressive but he is showing that potential i think fans will remain apprehensive about a deal for that amount of money i, I mean i think i'd probably more reflective would be around the 50 million pound mark right now um yeah. but if Arsenal want a striker, there aren't many that are out there right now that you can get with just over 24 hours left. And that release clause does make him an accessible option for the Gunners. Thank you so much, Max, for your time. Really appreciate uh, you taking it at such short notice to have a chat about Isaac. Tell people where they can find you on the socials and what you're going to be up to. Yeah, so you can find me on, on Twitter at Maxi Angelo, uh, Maxi with two A's. Uh, and yeah, I have, I've pretty much i'm all over the place right now doing podcasts and, and writing articles about about everything i i can possibly write articles about uh, so yeah if you want if you want to follow me you can follow me on twitter because i will be sharing my my work there brilliant lovely stuff max i really appreciate your time again people do go give maxi a follow he's a really good one and uh writing some fantastic stuff and listening to plenty of the stuff for podcast wise even though he is a liverpool fan from the <laughs> so, uh, but you know he's a great follower so do give him one uh we will see you guys very soon of course you'll be able to follow all the rest of our deadline day coverage tomorrow and the usual arsenal agenda show will return Fingers crossed we can bring you some good news about Arsenal transfers, maybe even about Alexander Isak himself. We will see you again very soon. Drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and as always, keep following us down the Arsenal way.